Hey, what's going on, guys? Sean Mathis here, CEO and founder of the Insurance Legion. I want to talk to you guys really quickly about contact rates and what to expect from the Insurance Legion system. And what I've put together, guys, is some research on sales statistics as well as contact rates and um, some expectations that I want to remind you of when you uh, went to the Insurance Legion website to uh, check this system out. All right, so I think a lot of agents have, you know, been burned by lead providers. Um, I've seen over the last several years a a trend that has really surfaced uh, among salespeople in the insurance world. So for agency owners who have teams, you know, what I've seen is a shift in the way that that salespeople behave, and I think part of it is is a culture that the agency owners have created over the last several years, as well as just a, a uh, sort of the dynamic of the industry because of the abundance of leads and lead providers that are out there for the industry. You know, when I started selling insurance uh, back in 2010, I remember what a hungry agent I was. Um, even as a sales rep, when I started as a team member with, uh, with Safe Farm, I was an aggressive hunter and I've just always been that way as a salesperson. And I think first and foremost, we have to look at our teams and we have to really take a step back and evaluate where our team's strong suits are. You know, there are some people who are like myself who uh, enjoy the hunt. They, uh, you know, that that's part of the thrill of being in sales is, you know, going out and hunting and, and finding that prospect and cultivating it all the way and nurturing it all the way to the point of a sale and having that satisfaction of, of going through that sales process. Um, there's other people who uh, are, are more consultative, they, um, they enjoy more of the customer service aspect of sales because there is an element of both. I think you know, any good salesperson is going to have uh, some charisma, customer service, as well as some persistence and aggressiveness, as well as competitiveness. Um, but sometimes you know, not all people have all of those. Some people are more customer service oriented. Um, some people just simply don't. Uh, enjoy sales at all and really shouldn't be there <laughs> and we have to look at that and, and take that into consideration as well and what you're able to do if you can you know kind of put the dynamic of your teams uh, in place you can you can use a system like the insurance lead genie to play to those strong suits because you're going to have a wide range of leads and sales opportunities uh, in the system right you're going to have some that are um, you know maybe a month out three months out six months out and you're going to have some people that are ready today and uh, you're going to have some people who are digesting content who are looking for uh, just some information they want to kind of get to know you and you can you know assign these these sales buckets to the team member strong suits right so you can have certain team members working certain facets of this sales process and i think a lot of times we just throw our, our team members in there and just say start working the leads uh, without taking any uh, account for uh, where these leads are in the sales process you know i think we've gotten to a place in the industry where um, we, we no longer follow up, we no longer cultivate, um, you know, we just know, and I think, you know, team members intuitively know that my agent's just gonna buy more leads. There's no reason to follow up with my leads because we're gonna get five more to tomorrow or 10 more tomorrow or however many, or if you're buying live transfers, why would I follow up with somebody when my phone is gonna ring five times a day with somebody who wants a quote? Uh, most teams are set up to, they're honestly disincentivized to do any follow-up. You know, if, if I know that my agent is going to just continue to purchase a plethora of leads, why follow up? For what? Right? And so I think as an agency owner, we have to really look at our business and, and decide how we want to uh, build the agency. Um, you know, as a, as, a, as a business owner, at some point, you, you want to get off of this hamster wheel that the industry has put you on, uh, consistently buying leads over and over, you're just bouncing from lead provider to lead provider to lead provider, and you're never, uh, it's a never ending cycle. And the only end to it, and for the longest time, there's only been really three, two solutions, either spend thousands of dollars, tens of thousands in some, case, in some cases on leads, or hire people and spend tens of thousands on people to do outbounding. So you've got this dynamic of either an inbound agency or an outbound agency. Both are extremely expensive. And what we've done with Lead Genie is to provide a third option. 
which is to have a solid combination of outbound and inbound opportunities, right? And and really uh, taking that, that database and starting to cultivate, nurture, and follow up in a way that no other agent is doing. They're, trust me, I've worked with thousands of agents across the country from a wide range of carriers, captive and independents alike, and nobody is following up. At best, you've got some X dating going on, at best, maybe some mailers, but there is no consistency. Insurance Legion is the first fully automated turnkey evergreen uh, marketing automation system in the insurance industry. There's plenty of platforms out there. I'm not gonna say we're the first platform for insurance, plenty of those out there, but we're the first turnkey evergreen system fully managed. It doesn't exist, we're it. So that's how I can say with confidence that there are no other agents doing this outside of our own members, okay? Um, but you know, at some point as, as you're spending money on marketing, you, you need to have a shift. There should come a point where you're not spending as much on marketing because you've got a database and you've got follow-ups that were a week out, two days out, two weeks out, a month out, three months out, six months out. And as you fill that database, you you need to spend less and less on the top of the funnel because as that's, that those buyers are moving down the funnel, you don't need to spend as much because you've got people following up. So let's look at a, a couple of, and, and let me also preface with this. I, I don't believe that there is a wrong way to generate the right, a right or a long, wrong way to generate a lead. I don't believe there is a such thing as a bad lead, all right? I think there's different ways to generate leads. There's different ways to prospect. There's, uh, you know, if somebody requests insurance and they want to quote, that is a good lead. Understand that. Right? We've got to get rid of this mentality that, oh, that's a bad lead because they didn't qualify. It's not a bad lead, all right? Your underwriters didn't want it it's still a good lead. They want insurance, right? And as a, a, you know, on the marketing side of things, as you're generating leads, you have to help, have your team understand the best that we can hope for on the marketing side is to have a legitimate opportunity at a sale. That is a good lead. A bad, a bad opportunity is somebody who is not interested in a lead, in, in insurance, but I wouldn't even call that a lead. That's a lie. It's not a lead. But a lead is, and somebody who says, I want insurance and I'm willing to talk to you about it, that's a good lead. And you can't let your team's morale slip on bad leads because they didn't answer or because they didn't qualify. You cannot say a lead is bad if you haven't talked to them. Can't say it. You don't know. You don't know. All right. So let's look at a couple of uh, statistics here. All right, so before we jump into the statistics, I want to um, really remind us of what you guys saw when you purchased the insurance lead genie, all right? And uh, if you'll remember, per thousand contacts, we said that you should see between 10 and 30 quotes. Now, how is that? That's 10 to 30 quotes. Number one, it's from the data that we see, right? It's from the, the number of, of people we see being moved into the quoted stage. Um, but it, it works out to one to three percent of your database that you have in the system is going to be willing to take a quote. All right. I need you to remember that. And that's what we've said from the beginning. OK, so your expectations should be around that. Right. And obviously, this is going to vary based on the source of the contacts that you put in. All right. If you give the system cold contacts where you have no relationship, understand, first and foremost, you have to build the relationship. Right, because dropping a cold contact and expecting them to be ready for a quote immediately is about the equivalent of standing in line in Walmart and turning around and saying, hey, what's your name? Would you like a quote? And them saying yes, right? <laughs> it's gonna take some time. Now, maybe if you saw that person week after week after week at Walmart, and finally four, five, six weeks after seeing them every week in that line, and then you turn around, you got to know their name, you got to know what her kid's name was. You saw her husband come in. You met him. After five, six, seven interactions, you could probably turn around and say, hey, Susie, can I get a, uh, would you be interested in a quote? And she'd probably say, yeah, right? So you got to be realistic and understand, you know, what you're, what you're expecting of the system, okay? So let's look at some sales and prospecting stats that uh, I think are worth noting. Here's something that is, is very important, and it's, uh, 
information that I got from foresters, okay? 63% of consumers that request information are three months out from purchasing insurance. 63% of consumers that request information aren't making a decision for three months. So when you purchase a system like this, you have to be thinking about marketing as a whole. What am I doing short term? What am I doing midterm? And what am I doing long term? There's activities and there's sources that are amazing for instant results right now. And if you will remember, there is going to be a percentage of people that you drop in that are ready right now. Okay, but 63% who are asking for information aren't ready for 90 days. So you need to be planting seeds today and building a pipeline for 90 days out, right? You can't jump into something like this and expect a miracle to happen. You know, it, 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 you haven't planted seeds for 90 days, so you can't expect to just immediately jump into a harvest. It doesn't work that way, right? 20% of these people who requested information, this isn't just 63% of people, this is 20, 63% of people who requested information. 20% will purchase between three and 12 months. 10% are going to wait more than 12 months, which basically those 10% are something happened and they said, you know what, I'm going to wait till next year. Never mind. Those are your never minds. And only 3% are considered active buyers. And this is by Forrest, is one of the largest consumer research companies on the planet. Now, isn't that interesting? 3% of people are considered active buyers. And what did I say when you signed up? one to three percent of people of your database at any given time are going to be willing to and request a quote right this isn't made up information guys we have data hundreds and hundreds of agents tens of thousands of contacts hundreds of thousands of messages being sent every day we have an enormous amount of data that supports what we're telling you it doesn't work for some people sometimes the system works period end of story but you also have to work the system all right a study of at and uh, that was recently shared showed that 86 percent of all phone calls go unanswered I'll repeat that 86 percent of all phone calls go unanswered not prospecting phone calls all phone calls because we've moved to texting we've moved to you know uh things like Facebook and email and uh, Snapchat and Instagram and stories. This is like family to family phone calls are going unanswered. You could ask my mom how many times she calls me that I don't answer the phone. <laughs> We're busy. We are, we are as busy as we've ever been as a society, all right? And it takes an average of five to eight attempts to even reach a prospect, five to eight attempts to even reach a prospect. 80% of all sales require five follow-up attempts after the initial presentation. Five follow-up attempts after the initial presentation, not five follow-up attempts. It takes five to eight to even reach them, hit your presentation, and then another five to close the deal. Okay? 44% of all sales reps quit after just one to two follow-ups after that initial presentation. See, we get the idea that because we had a meeting, because we had a presentation, that th that person's going to be ready to buy. If you back up again, 63% of consumers that are requesting information are three months out. So you got to ask yourself in the sales conversation, are you gauging where this buyer's at? Are you dealing with the 3% buyer or are you three, dealing with the 63% buyer? Are you asking that in the sales conversation? Chances are you're not. Neither is your sales team, right? You're five times more likely to reach a lead within five minutes of the interaction. So as folks are moving through the Lead Genie system and you're notified that they went to your website, you're notified that they opened up your content, you're notified that they clicked on the link, you're notified that they requested a quote. Are you hitting them within five minutes? Chances are you're not. Chances are you're not. You're letting somebody take an interaction, 
have interaction with your content, engage with the system, engage with your website, and it could be hours, sometimes days, before you're making any content. And I'll tell you, you know, with a system like this, everything is tracked, everything. Every interaction, everything is tracked. So you need to be having your, your agents put in there, timestamped when they call, and measuring how long, because that timestamp is logged, when the interaction happened, how quick is your team responding to the lead? Okay, if somebody asks for a quote and you call them three days later, what kind of a taste do you think that's gonna leave in their mouth? Probably not very good. You know, if you guys requested information from us and you didn't hear from us for a week, uh, you probably would have moved on to something else if you were a 3%, right? So we're all after this 3%, but then we treat them like they're a 63%. And then wonder why we're not contacting, why we're not closing, right? Understand that Wednesdays and Thursdays are the best days to reach people. Wednesdays and Thursdays. Do you know when I had my coaching program, I've had my calls on Thursdays at 11 Central for five years. Our coaching calls with Lee Genie are on Wednesdays. Why? Because I understand consumer behavior, I understand that Wednesdays and Thursdays are gonna be my best opportunity to reach you. Email has a 40 times, it has 40 times better conversion rates than social and PPC. In fact, it's 40 times more successful than Facebook and Twitter combined. And see, we think that email is, is this, you know, this archaic thing that nobody really uses. After 90 days with us, you're gonna see that that's not the, that's not the case. Uh, text and SMS messages have a 98% read rate, 98%. So if we're struggling with contact rate, then let's look at the automations that are in place and figure out how we can use SMS with that. Are we sending an SMS after the engagement? Are we sending a follow-up SMS a day later, right? Like this is all stuff that's, that's fully uh, functioning inside the system. Are we using it, right? Remember, this whole thing can be customized to the workflows that you guys are looking for. Yes, it comes out of the box with a set of workflows, but we can customize it to uh, help you guys. So if you're struggling with uh, speed to market and responding to these leads right away, and we need to fill some follow-ups in there with SMS or with the, uh, with the follow-up message, then let's do that. Uh, that's why when we roll out the the uh, live chat function it, it's going to be amazing that's that's just as effective as an sms having that direct mobile to mobile contact through a live chat the prime time for phone prospecting is 4 to 6 30. 4 to 6 30 so when are you calling these folks calling somebody at 10 a.m and wondering why they're not answering probably because they're at work just an idea have a strategy for your call flows and follow-ups, okay? You can't just randomly contact leads and expect that, that they're gonna answer, right? And the whole purpose of the system is that, that you don't have to randomly call. You know exactly when to call. You know when they're reading the content. You know when they're, they're on your website. You know when they've requested the quote. So why are we randomly calling people? There should be no randomization of it. We're giving you the real-time notifications so that you can call them right then. You've gotta be consistent with your sales process and follow-up sequence. You can't just let your team decide at random when they're gonna prospect and when they're gonna follow up. You have to have a system. That's why this entire thing has been mapped out for you. Now, the only thing that you need to do is get a system in place with your team, a structure that says, this is how we treat the leads. This is how we follow up. And it may be different. It may be different than what you've done in the past. But guess what? We're in a different market than you were in the past. There's a reason that you have to do something different. You have to grow. You have to hit these numbers. And you're not going to do it continuing to operate the way that you have in the past. You can't dump a, a, a system like this. You can't dump a brand new system into a stale process. It's, it's not going to work. You need to leave voicemails with your office number. You need to be text messaging. Text your, your customers prior to reaching out so they see that number, they recognize who you are, they know that you're calling. Leave a message, let them know that you'll be calling back in the message. 
We're going to have a whole another a whole separate training on scripting. But leave a message. You can be persistent without being aggressive. This is a big thing that I see going on is that, you know, we're we're not following up consistently because we we think we're going to be that aggressive um, you know, off-putting sales guy. Understand, you can be persistent without being aggressive. Those are two totally different things. And in a busy society like we're in, People appreciate persistency. If you're trying to sell a guy like me, who has multiple cars, I'm the type of client that you guys would want. I've got four life insurance policies. I've got three cars, a home. Like that's the type of person you want. But guess what? I work to have that nice stuff. The clients that you want, the clients that your underwriters have an appetite for, they've got families, they've got jobs, they've got extracurriculars with their kids, right? They've got things going on in their life, and that's the way you want it. They have a life that's worth protecting, right? It, it, if you're, if you wanted the, you know, part-time backroom stalker at Kroger that works four to six on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you'd have a hell of a time, uh, hell of an easy time getting a hold of him or her, right? Because they're not working, right? But that person's also not going to have any money to buy a premium policy like yourself is selling. So you can't say, I want this type of customer and, and understanding how it, what their life is like and then expect them to be as responsive as a part-time backroom stalker. It doesn't work like that. You've got to be realistic. You've got to assume the prospect is interested because they are, <laughs> they are, that's what we are. That, that's the whole point of the system is that you are calling people who are interested. If you put a thousand people in the system, we're telling you 10 to 15% of them are gonna be engaged. That means 85 to 90% are not interested. And we're not asking you to call those people. The only people that the system is telling you to call are the people that are interested. Listen, people don't open up emails talking about insurance rates and how it's priced and endorsements and how to save money on their home insurance and six mistakes that homeowners insurance make and uh, like they don't they don't open that stuff and digest it and engage with it if they're not interested at some level right it just doesn't happen i, I don't I ask anybody that that you know but and i tell you i don't know anybody who knows anybody who just sits around and reads insurance articles <laughs> Right? It's not interesting unless you're in the market. So when you're calling, you got to be realistic with your expectations, right? Put yourself in the prospect's shoes. When are you calling? What else might they be doing? How important do you think you really are in the, in the prospect's world? Listen, guys, we're selling something that people don't find interesting, that they don't like to do that they're forced to buy by either the banks or the legal system. It's not fun. You don't sell anything that's fun. You don't sell anything that's interesting. You don't sell anything that they get to take home and show their friend. But then you want your prospects to like beat, beat down your door with excitement to talk to you about insurance, right? But here's the great thing about this system is that the, the value that you've not been able to deliver for years because of the way that, that the industry has commoditized what we do, the value that you have not been able to deliver on these conversations because when a prospect gets on the phone with you, what's the first thing they wanna know? What's, the, what's it cost? How much is it? What's your price? Right, so you can't even have a value-driven conversation. That's what this system does. That's what this system allows you to do is deliver value on autopilot to the masses thousands a day you're able to give them the information that you used to be able to have at a 15 to 20 minute conversation when you used to get to sit down with people and actually talk to them about insurance and explain coverages that's lost on people why because they have all of that information at their fingertips they can get that information if they want it right but instead of waiting for them to go search we can start delivering it to them and maybe they're not interested today, but guess what? Every single person in your database will buy insurance. The most important thing that you have to remember, it's not if your database is going to buy insurance, it's when and from who. 
And if you're not in front of them, it won't be you. I can assure you of that. This is all about timing, guys. Everything we do is about timing. And understanding that only 3% of people are ever interested at any given moment. It means 97% of the time you're going to strike out. And this system will, will uh, stay in front of 100% of those people all the time. So you're always going to be in front of those 3%. Now, if you're randomly calling, what do you think the odds are on a random X date phone call or a random manual phone call, which by the way, delivers no value. How likely do you think you are to hit that 3% at the right time on a random phone call once a month, once a week even, on an X date, on a cold call? It's like hitting the lottery. It's not gonna happen. But if you can consistently stay in front of them, consistently give good content, consistently build value, position yourself as an expert, consistently staying in front of them. When the time is right, you will be there. In the absence of this system, you're banking on a stroke of luck, period of story. That's what it is. You're, and why do you think Geico and Progressive and, and Allstate and State Farm are spending hundreds of millions of dollars marketing consistently? Why? Because they know it's timing. They have to be there all the time so that when the customer's ready, they are there. They're not gonna run an ad once a week. They're not gonna run an ad once a month. They're not gonna run an ad once a quarter. They're going to run ads on every single medium, on every single day, all day long. Not just during the mornings, not just in the afternoons, not just in the evenings, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Listen, you can't work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but guess what? With this system, you can be in front of your prospects 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never sleeps. It sends out on Sundays. It doesn't, it doesn't stop sending on the weekends. It doesn't stop sending it in the evenings. It's there when your customers are there. We know that most customers are gonna be available from four to 6.30. Guess what time you close, five? Guess what, Lee Jean is gonna be there at six. Lee Jean will be there at eight. Lee Jean is gonna, Lee Jean is gonna be there on Saturday when they wanna look at, at information. Lee Jean, is gonna, Lee Jean is gonna be there when they are up at night and can't sleep and they remember that email that you sent them or they remember that website where they saw that article that you posted. You're not gonna be able to compete manually following up anymore. It's not gonna work. You cannot compete direct mail. Geico will outmail you every day of the week. Your own company will outmail you every day of the week. Your own company is going to outbid you on pay-per-click. Your own company is going to crush you on social media. But what we've built is a self-contained ecosystem with a website, with SMS, with texting, with uh, workflows, capturing every single opportunity, every single time so that you cannot miss an opportunity. The only way you fail is by simply not working. That's it. That's the only way that you can fail with this system in place.